Hi guys, in this lesson I'm going to give you a bit of a primer on IP addressing before we move on to the network lessons. So IP addressing is a big subject and I'm really just giving you a primer here. I'm giving you what I think you need to understand at a very basic level to be able to comprehend some of the other concepts we're going to cover in the course. Um, but if you do want more detail on IP addressing, it is a big subject and I'll show you some places to go and find that information. So for now, let's get started on understanding at a basic level what IP addressing is and how we can use it. So remember earlier in the section, I mentioned that when you connect to a server over a network, even if you're using something like a domain name, like you're connecting to amazon.com, for example, your computer still needs to find the IP address of the server to connect to it. So we have friendly names called domain names, but the web server actually has an IP. So let's say that you connect to a internal website. So this user is inside their company and in the company office using a web browser and connecting to a domain name. Now this is a local domain name. So the dot local means that it's internal. It's not on the internet. It's not a dot com or a dot co dot UK or so on. It's an internal domain name. So the user is trying to connect to the internal website. So what happens is after entering in that domain name, the computer needs to connect to something called a domain name system server, a DNS server. The DNS server has a database. It's called a zone file. And in that zone file, it has records of the domain names and their corresponding IP addresses. So for example, we can see this zone file has the mycompany.local website address as 192.168.0.1. It also has an address for the email server. So once the computer has asked the DNS server and received a response telling it what the IP address is, it can then connect to that computer using that IP address. So IP addresses are used by computers to connect to each other. So how is a IP address constructed? Well, this is what's known as an IP version four address. I'll talk a little bit more later in the lesson about IP version six, but IPv4 has been around for a long time and it's still in a lot of use. And it's made up of what's called a network ID and a host ID. So in this example, the 192.168.0 is the network ID and the host ID is dot one. So in the example of our web server, its unique IP is one and it's on this network, 192.168.0. So how do you know what is the network portion and what is the host portion? Because it can be different depending on the type of IP address range you're using. So we have something called a subnet mask. The subnet mask tells us which portion of the IP address is assigned to the network and which portion is assigned to the host itself. So the subnet mask defines the network and host IDs. An IP address is made up of 32 bits. Now, what does that mean? Well, in binary, each of these is an octet. So the 192, the 168, each of these boxes is essentially an octet. So that means it's eight bits. So in the example of the subnet mask, 255 is represented in binary as eight ones and a zero is eight zeros. So let's explore this in a little bit more detail. At the bottom here, you can see this chart. And what this is telling you is the relative value of one of those bits. So remember in our 255, we had eight ones. Now the one on the left is the most significant and the one on the very right here is the least significant bit. And these are the values. Now with zero, it basically just means that all the zeros are zero, so there's no values. But with 255, all of these ones are added up. So you have one, which is 128, plus 64, plus 32, plus 16, plus eight, plus four, plus two, plus one, and that comes to 255. So what about with 192? Well, in this case, 192 is 128 plus 64. 
and then the rest of the bits are zeros because that's 192 if you add those two together. And then with 168, we've got a 1, so we've got 128. We've got a 0, so that doesn't count. We've then got 32, so we add 128 and 32. Then the 16 doesn't count. And then we add the 8. And if you add those together, you get 168. And of course, with a 1, that just means that all of these are zeros, except for this one at the end, which actually has a value of one. So I know it's a bit complicated, but that's how IP addresses are constructed. And it is important to understand the binary values for one particular reason. And that is that a network and subnet mask is often represented in this format. So in this format, we say the address, the network address, is 192.168.0.0 and we have a slash 24. Now why 24? Because remember this is eight ones, this is eight ones and this is eight ones. So that's 8, 16, 24. So we know that the net mask is 24 and that helps us to understand that with this network the 192, the 168 and the 0 are going to be the network portion and then that last portion is assigned for the hosts. So we have different types of class of IP address as well. And these are three of the main classes that you'll work with. We've got class A, class B, and class C. Now the address that we looked at is a class C address. And that means that the first three octets are assigned to the network ID. And then the last one is used for the host ID. With a class B, as you can see, it's split between two and two. And then with a class A, there's only one octet used for the network and the rest is for the hosts. So from that, we can work out how many hosts are available in each network. And I'll start at the bottom because we've been working with this number and it's a bit easier to understand. So in this example, we have the first address being 192.168.0.1. And the last address is 255. So the total addresses is 255. And that's because, remember, if you had all ones, you'd have 255. And if you have all zeros, you have zero. And then all of the bits in between that, all the different combinations between that, give you the total number of hosts you can have on this particular network. Now, with a class B, you've got 192.168.0.0 to 255255. So that's a lot more addresses. We've got 65,000 534 because we've got 16 bits which are able to be assigned to the computers so the hosts on your network and then with a class a it gets even bigger because we've got all three we've got all these 24 bits here which are available for individual computers so that's a hell of a lot of addresses now one way to find this information yourself is go to google search for ip subnet calculator and there's a few different options here. I quite like the IP subnet calculator here at calculator.net. So I'm just going to go to this one. And what I can do is I'm going to put in my IP address here. So let's say our 192.168.0.0 network block. You can then choose your subnet mask. So let's find the 255.255.255.0. That's the one with the slash 24. And click on calculate. And now we can see our address range. So you can see the usable host IP range. And it starts at 1 and goes to 254. We can see a total address is of 256, but usable is 254. And that's because you can't use the 0 for a computer. And you can't use the 192.168.0.255 because that's known as a broadcast address, which means you're sending traffic to everyone. So that's another tool to help you to understand IP addresses better. Now, I did mention earlier that there's another protocol, another version. So there's IP version 4, that's what we've been talking about, but then there's IP version 6 as well. You can see the address here is very different, and the address space is also much bigger. It goes all the way up to 128 bits. So it's a massive address space. That means a huge amount of possible addresses. And IP version 6 was created some years ago now because the IP version 4 address block was getting used up. And so this has such a huge amount of addresses that are possible 
that it means we're not going to run out for a long time, even though, you know, internet usage is increasing and the number of devices on the internet is increasing exponentially. So IP version six is also used in the cloud. But for what we're doing in this course, we're going to be sticking with IP version 4. So I'm not going to cover IP version 6 in any more detail. Now, by the way, as I mentioned, IP addressing is quite complex. So if you're looking for more information, I suggest you, you just head over to Google and there's lots of good websites. And you might want to just search for something like IP addressing basics to get a better understanding. There's some good articles around. And you might want to look into classless interdomain routing, which is something which is very useful if you're going to be creating your own subnet ranges and defining how many addresses you want in your networks. So that's it for now. Hopefully that's given you a good basis in IP addressing to help you understand what we're going to be doing in this course.